He ain't never had no candy before, has he? <laughs> I'm glad I ain't the only one. You take my boy to the store, he wants got to have everything. You think he ain't never had nothing. <laughs> I'll take that one and that one. No, you won't either. <laughs> but anyhow, um, today, um, at this time, I'd like to recognize um, Grady Oakley. He has fulfilled, it says, all requirements of a regular attendance and our Sunday school and merits the official gold badge for um, his completion of the terms. Um, two years, exactly. He's, um, we skipped last year, so he's got one again this year. So this is for two years. And so I want to give this to Brother Grady Oakley today. For He's been faithful. And uh, uh, this is an honor, and it is a testament. But he'll receive a bigger one than this when he reaches heaven. So let's all give him a round of applause today. Might be a testament why he does so much, huh? God said every good gift coming from above. And every time you're allowed to do something, he don't take the credit for it. He gives it to the Lord. Because truly, it's the Lord that allows us to do anything that we do today. Whether we, the things we want to do or the things we have to do. God gives us the ability to do it. Appreciate that very much. Also, one more thing before we get into the message. Brother Mike was not in here. Brother Mike Holcomb. I'm not going to overlook him. He's, uh, my opinion, he's a big part of our church. He does a lot. Uh, he served our country. He was in the National Guard. And without a doubt, he was outside doing something for the church. That's why he was not in here. So I appreciate him, appreciate his family. And I believe he takes the deacon uh, ship uh, to his heart. To be a deacon, it means to serve. And he does. Appreciate that very much. Appreciate you, Brother Mike. Thank you for your help. Yes, sir. All right, let's jump to the message today, Acts chapter number 12. Acts chapter number 12 today, if you uh, find your spot, find there, Acts chapter number 12. We're going to read a few verses. Uh, uh, we're going to read, I want to read together the first five verses. If you find your spot, I'd like to ask you to stand with me. If you're willing and you're able today, uh, willing and you're able, God knows your heart though. So if you cannot, he does not hold that against you. Acts chapter number 12, uh, verse number 1. We're going to read down to verse number 5. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. And I'll try to share with you what God's laid on my heart today, okay? Acts chapter number 12, verse number 1, and it says this. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it, saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. For you, that translate, that's Easter. Same time of year, same time, same place. What's going on, okay? Then there were days of the unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, delivered him to four quarterings. Of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in the prison, but by prayer was made and without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now let's bow and ask God's blessing upon the reading of this word today. Dear Lord, we know that we need you. God, and we realize that without you we are unable to do anything. Lord, the very breath that gives us life. Uh, Lord, we can't pray. We can't proclaim your name. Can't raise our hand. Lord, it's the very thing that goes inside of us that causes everything to happen. Lord, we thank you also for the blood that was shed for us. God, thank you for giving you a son. And Lord Jesus, thank you for giving you life. And Lord, I pray today that you'd help us. Uh, Lord, that we would hear something today. Lord, uh, uh, blessings that we've already received by being here. We thank you for them. 
Lord, I pray, God, today you'd help us, that we would uh, give it more of our time and our heart and our thoughts to you, that you'd give us the ability to lay aside every sin and weight uh, that's on our mind, our heart, whatever it might be, which does so easily beset us. Lord, help us to listen today, to take something with us that would be planted within our heart, planted within our soul, God, that we'd be able to be better men and women for you, that we might be able to share it with somebody else. Lord, please raise the edge of protection around our hearts and our minds. Bless the kids that are here with us today and those ladies that are here to help them. I pray, God, you'd encourage their heart that the seed be planted there as well. Lord, that each of us and every one of us that when we leave your house can say it has been good to be here. But Lord, because we've come ready, and Lord, most of all, we've been obedient to serve you. We need you today. We love you, and we thank you for all you've done. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated this morning. So I want to share with you a little bit more out of this chapter. This is very important today. Uh, Miss Janet, she brought up to these kids up here how uh, a promotion of what they could be, opportunities of who they could be if they had allowed God to make a difference in their life. Acknowledge who He is and what they can become for Him. And as they used to say on the, uh, on the radio, this is the rest of the story. Okay? So now you understand that King Herod, seemingly, um, he's, his agenda is being pushed. So I want to share these uh, some thoughts with you in just a few moments. But I want to read quickly the rest, uh, the rest of the portion of this scripture. I want you to exactly know what's going on. So they've killed James, which is John's, uh, John's brother. He's beheaded him, actually. And it's fixing to be Peter's turn. This is at Easter time. The four quadrants that, you're ta- that they talk about and they say within the scripture, uh, a one quadrant or four quadrants is a band of four soldiers. There are 16 men guarding Peter at this moment. 16 of them. Now I want to mind you, he is a, uh, he's a clay St. John. He's a, a big one. All right? He drug, the Bible tells us that when he took the nets out of the seashore, he drug them in himself. The net's full of fish. He drug them in by himself. So Peter, whether he's a big guy or just strong, I don't know. But there's six of them guarding him right now. For they have some reason why they think that's needful. Now the Bible says, people say the Bible's full of fairy tales. If that's so, then why is it banned in 50 countries around this world? If they ain't nothing to it and they don't nothing amount it, then why do they ban it in 50 countries? If it's no more than a fairy tale, won't hurt nobody and don't mean nothing. There's a reason this man's got 16 men gardening. So listen to what it says just after that. They found him, they've got him apprehended. It's on Easter. <coughs> and they've kept him in prison. And the church is praying with praying for him. Let's read verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison by prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Verse 6, When Herod would have brought him forth that same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Verse 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. The angel did. Smote Peter on the side, raised raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off, fell for, off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind thy sandals. And so he did. And he said to them, Cast thy garments about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And it wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. He's saying, How did this happen? And he thinks he's dreaming. Verse number 10 uh, when they were past the first and the second war, they came into the iron gate. Listen, they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. Are you listening? Which opened to them of its own accord. Nobody touched it. God opened the gate. Okay? And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was coming to himself, he said, Now I know of surety that the Lord has sent this angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, uh, 
where many were gathered together praying. And Peter knocked at the door of the gate, and the damsel came and hearkened, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate. She's so surprised with gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. They said unto her, Thou art mad, but... Con- but con- constantly affirmed that it was even so. And then said they, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door, they saw him and they were astonished. But he beckoning them. Now listen, there's a point to me reading this. Listen closely. But he beckoning unto them with the hand and hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now as soon as it was the day where no small stir among the soldiers, a big stir was going on, what was become of Peter? And when Herod had sought for him and fought him not and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put unto death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. Verse 20, And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came, one accord to him, having made Vladis the king, Chamberlain, their friend, desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And of... And upon a set day, Herod arrayed, listen, in a royal apparel, set upon his throne, and made an orientation unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of God. Herod spoke, and they said, It's the voice of God. How ridiculous. And not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Now, I want to share with you the very thoughts that the Lord's laid upon my heart about this text today. So I want to say first and foremost that I appreciate uh, our veterans that we have today. appreciate the, them being the soldiers that they were and that they probably still are within their hearts. Uh, uh, what they've done for us. But today I want to share, talk to you about a spiritual soldier named Peter. I want to talk to you about you, uh, to you today, a soldier in prayer. Without a doubt today, this man knew God. Peter, he walked with God. God, Jesus Christ, chose him today. He was a disciple. He was a, uh, no more than a fisherman. He said, come, pick up your cross and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And then he denied Christ three times. And I want to tell you that, not because I want to beat him in the ground, because I want you to know that it makes no difference who you are, where you've been, or what's going on in your life. If you Give your heart and your mind back to God. And remember that He loves you. That He'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you. That you're always His child. Boy or girl, man or woman makes no difference. You're His today. If you'll give yourself back to Him, He'll do great and mighty things uh, which thou knowest not. That's what He tells us. I I called upon the Lord. He showed me great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He was laying in prison. Sixteen men gardening. Two laying beside of Him. Two at the gate and bound twice with two pair of chains. And when Jesus Christ uh, heard from uh, uh, the, the, the people praying at the church house, and Peter no doubt praying himself, uh, the angel come by and t- uh, tapped him, smote him and said, Get up, it's time to go. God's heard your prayer. He knows the hearts of your, of your family and your friends. And you're not staying here. You're leaving today. You're leaving today. And without a doubt, there's plenty of things and places that God would have us to go. Things He wants us to do and be. But sometimes we see the situation that's facing us. And say, I can't do that. There's no way God see that for me. And without a doubt, Peter felt and saw the same thing. And I remind you again that he denied Christ three times. And found himself uh, fishing and wall in his muck and Christ said come and dine the master called come and dine is what he did went on the seashore Christ asked him lovest thou me more than these Peter and without a doubt he found himself he thought at the end of his days in prison with 16 men gardening and God came to his rescue God came to his rest. He decided that on that day uh, when Christ and him had that meeting after dinner Peter Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Well, feed my sheep. And he said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? 
What are the these? I have no idea. It's different for all of us. Could be jobs. It could be wants. It could be places you want to go. Things that you've never done. Things you've never seen. But he said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these to be faithful to me? Found himself in a place where he was uh, walking with God, uh, uh, being with God, serving God, wor- uh, preaching God's word. And me and God had him do it. He found himself in, in, uh, in prison. They done killed James, beheaded him. It was his term. Now later they did, but not on this account. Not on this account. So today I want to share with you a soldier in prayer. You want to be something that matters? A soldier is somebody to me that's relentless. That sacrifices, that gives some things up, that's got a, a, a looks past the situation. Well, my, uh, uh, I, I'm out here, I'm, uh, I'm serving, uh, my feet hurt, uh, I'm tired, I've got cut. You look past that to get your job done. To be a soldier for Christ, look past ourself. I'm tired. I've worked all day. It's time to go to church. I'm going to go to church anyways because I want to worship Him. I want Him to know that I mean business. Truly, it's that simple. I want God to know that I mean business. Well, preacher, I can just tell him. Sure you can. Sure you can. But those feet that get up and walk, that means more love is in action tonight, today, tomorrow, next week. makes no difference. But I want to talk to you today about being a soldier for Christ. A soldier for Christ. The very point of this message, the very point of this passage happens in verse number 5. Look with me there. We'll find most of the message there. Peter therefore was kept in prison. We've known that. What did it say? The very pinnacle. This is what this calls. This message is called a pivotal prayer. A prayer warrior. To be a soldier in Christ. to To pray to God on others' behalf. But prayer was made without ceasing. Of the church unto God for him. That changed the whole process. That changed everything. Today, a pivotal prayer. A pinnacle prayer. You know, if that happens, just like we talked about in Sunday school, an intercessory prayer. A prayer with somebody uh, whenever you need something. So I want to say this today. Our pain sometimes, the suffering that we face, sorrow that we have, the loss of many things. Whether it be uh, 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 jobs, vehicles, fires, loved ones. Whatever it might be changes all kinds of circumstances. And there is but one thing that will make all the difference. That's Jesus Christ. That's God Almighty. And that pivotal prayer is what will bring the peace. That passeth all understanding that can replace anything that it is that you've lost or that's happening or that's going on to make any kind of difference that you need to have been made. There ain't nothing you can do. Can't buy this nowhere. But it's a prayer, a pivotal prayer today. You want to make a difference? A intercession, a relationship with Jesus Christ will make all the difference today. Now, it is a fact that we can't see yet. Doing things for God, walking in His will, being in His, uh, being what He wants it to be, doing what He has to do. It is a fact that we will receive crowns for that there. You don't get them now. But I do believe, as we've just read, by walking with God, by being with God, being what God have you to be, loving Him and choosing Him. He just wants to know, do you love me? Will you choose me? Will you go with me? In the moment that you need him most, he'll send whatever it takes because he loves you. Because he loves you, he can do anything. The Bible talks about angels, that they're walking around among us. We have guardian angels that we cannot see walking among us today, being with us today, guiding us today, protecting us today. You have no idea when he will choose to use one. But one guaranteeing thing that he will choose is the prayer of many. 
Verse number two, James tells us that he, the Bible tells that James was murdered, beheaded. Peter was also waiting his turn. Verse 24 tells us, and see what you might look at, is that uh, Herod's agenda is being pushed. But by the end of the chapter, verse 24, uh, verse 24 says, but, by the word of, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Based on what? Prayer. Without ceasing. For him unto God. So number one today, I'm going to move quickly. A soldier in prayer. Soldiers in prayer is what we all need to be. Number one today, a soldier to me is persistent. That's number one. Number one, to be persistent in prayer. Verse number five, you'll see this. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. So number one, persistent. Prayer without ceasing today. We see that. We hear that. Also, Matthew chapter number seven, verse seven. What does it say? Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For he that seeketh findeth, them that asketh, he giveth today. If we asked, if we asked today, persistency. Be persistent in what we do. Don't give up. Don't quit. And those are things that all of us need to want to do. We don't we or not want to sit down. Listen to me today. I don't care what age you're at. You could be 25. You could be 24. You could be 38. You could be 68, 78, 93. Next, don't ever mind. To be faithful last week, that's for last week. If you're alive this week, uh, to get a crown and to, to be, uh, have God's blessings this week, we must be faithful this week. We need Him today. We need to serve Him like we need Him. What if our breath was dependent on how faithful we was to Him? That's all I'm saying. What if your breath, your heartbeat, what He does for you, just like work. Honest day's work for honest day's pay. I mean, I mean let me ask you today. What if, what if your service and your life and your living was based on what you, what you could do for Him? I worked eight hours, you owe me eight hours. I'm just asking today. Don't work that way with Him, does it? It gives more than He ever receives. That's your God today. Prayer without ceasing made all the difference. That's a pivotal prayer. Ask. If you don't ask, you don't receive. Man told me one time, a wealthy man, wealthiest man I ever met. If any, they won't give you what you don't ask for. You can't expect it. Now, it is right to expect it. They should do, they should know, and they should be. But it don't happen that way. If you don't ask and don't require it, you won't get it. He's talking about work. But it's the same for everything else. God, Jesus Christ, what he's saying, James, if you don't ask, then you ask amiss that you would consume it upon your lust just because you want it. You're supposed to get it. No, you must ask. You must ask. Number two, and I'm going to move quickly. Number two, a company, which is also, an, I think, another military term, company. So what, how does that translate to this? Verse number five, prayer made by the church. Verse number five, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church. The people. So how does that, what does that mean for us today? A soldier in prayer. The Bible tells us also, where two or three are gathered in his name, what? He'll be in the midst. Could you imagine if each of us uh, started praying, I mean, with all of our hearts about one thing. Do you think that it would, it would change a, a thought in heaven? We talked about in Sunday school today, having an, in an intercessory prayer where that the Holy Spirit goes to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ make intercession to God Almighty, the, the, uh, the one true only God on our behalf. In, mur in murmurings that we cannot even understand. But that is called intercessory prayer, which we can also do. It tells us over in Romans 8, 28, that we, must, we should have an intercessory prayer on our behalf for others. A relationship that he knows about us, for us. Just like Abraham and Lot. 
when Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah, that Abraham begged and pleaded with God an intercessory prayer on Lot's behalf to not slay him, to not kill him, to beg and plead, to allow him to be free, to come out of that sin, give him an opportunity. Can I go down? And he talked God down. You with me? He talked him down. Why? Why? He loved Abraham. The only reason he loved Abraham. Why did he love Abraham? Because Abraham loved him. How do you know that? Because Abraham was tested. And what did Abraham do? He chose God. Will you choose God? Say, I'm done saved. No, every day. Abraham knew God. Abraham was counted in that number. But to be right with God, we must choose Him every day. Just because He chose Him the last 50 years, that does matter. But the moment you quit choosing Him, the moment He, he stands. Now He's within your heart. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But the moment you quit choosing Him, that relationship... Brother Mike, if you left Miss Janet here today, you didn't come back get her till next Sunday, you'd probably be in trouble. She'd probably make it home. But when she gets there, it's not going to be good. Now her thoughts and everything else is on her mind, but you better be concerned about those thoughts too. You're going to be in trouble. You better consider them. She's still your wife, though, isn't she? According to God and, this, and, and the government, United States. You can leave God behind on your choices. You're still God's son. You're still God's daughter. That's still his wife, even though he left her here. Still his wife. Makes no never mind. Y'all can bicker, fuss, carry on, point fingers, whatever you want to do. You can ride separate cars. You're still husband and wife. They change the thing. And change the thing. God still loves you. If you leave Him, He's still your Heavenly Father. But you've broken the intercessory. You've broken the relationship. You've broken that circumstance. You've broken those things. What got to that point? Two or three are gathered in His name. He'll be in the midst. Listen to this one. He said, we're supposed to worship Him in one mind and one accord. And they did that. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. What? Whereby we're sealed into the day of redemption. i got a question for you, and I'm going to move to the third point quickly. If we don't pray, who will? If this is the church, and we don't pray, who will? Who will? Who will today? The Bible tells us to bear you one another's burdens. And you can. Just like David, he carried Saul's armor. Saul said, here, take this armor. Now, he was Saul's armor bearer. He said, Saul, I can't wear that. It's too big for me. Now, I can't. now listen to me. Little David is me. Uh, Goliath is uh, Mike and uh, Clay back there. I can carry the armor. I got no problem carrying it. It don't fit me. It don't fit me. See, God's got my own armor. That fits me. That's made just for me. He's got the own grace that's just made just for me and only, only, only for me. They got their own grace. They got their own mercy. Got their own uh, touch. And I can help them carry it. And it's my obligation to help them carry it. And yours too. We can carry it, but we can't wear it. It won't fit. It don't fit. James and Dwayne might be brothers. Same height than all. Guarantee it don't fit. Same family, same dad, same mom. Each one's got their own. We can carry it and we should. But we can't wear it. I can't sit in your spot and you can't sit in mine. Somebody else can pass away and go away and somebody else can sit there. But that's still so and so spot. Somebody else just sitting there. It ain't the same. Same with God. Number three this morning I want to share with you. 
Prayer made unto God, which is communication. Communication unto the commander. I promise I'm going to hurry right here. Listen closely. In a time of war, in a time of need, they must make communication. They've got one guy that carries a, a, a telephone. Tell that guy, he reports back to somebody, we need help, big time. We need help, whatever it might be. And then they must explain the coordinates, the situation, what's going on. Send it right now, we need help. And this is what they did. Prayer was made unto God. Oh, on what? On His behalf. I'm going to get, get in a hurry too fast. Communication today. We must make prayer unto God. John 14, 6 says, No, can, no, uh, no man come to the Father but by me. You with me today? Do you also realize that every prayer is not made to God? Talks about the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They said out there that they prayed for, for people to hear. That didn't get two foot above the ground. You need to pray to be heard. It's a talking to God. It's a relationship. It's meaningful. It's for a purpose. And we've all got many purposes. The Bible tells us that every need should bow and every tongue should confess that what? Jesus is Lord. And that group of people on Peter's behalf proclaimed Jesus was Lord for that man in the prison. For that man in the prison. Communication. Prayer was made unto God. Number four, and I'm going to be done. Prayer was made for his behalf. This is important. Write this down. If you don't hear nothing else. Hebrews 13, verse number 3. Listen to what it says. Remember them that are in bonds, Peter. Each of you. Remember them that are in bonds. Now listen. As bonds within them. As if you were in bonds. That's your sister. That's your brother. Love your neighbor as yourself. You heard this before. Remember them that are in bonds. As bonds with them. As if it was you. And them which suffer adversity. Anything or anybody. Any circumstance. As being yourselves. Also in the body. Bear you one another's burdens. That group of people took on his account. They cried and pleaded on his behalf for his concern, for his situation. And the Holy Spirit, God in heaven, sent so much that there was no other way anything could happen. And see, this is God. He, he will do anything at any moment for anybody. But he's got to know that when he does it, will you take the glory? That's what he's about. Honor thy father and thy mother. You'll let them know. You got to realize that you didn't get where you got on your own. Something was given. Something was instilled. Something was shared. Somehow you was blessed. You was. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God wants to know today. Will you choose me? Will you choose me? See, this last part, it was personal. It was made for, pre for Peter. It was personal. Not judging him, not sizing him up. They were begging on his behalf. He was bound with adversity. And what did the Bible say in Hebrews 13? As being yourselves. So today I ask you, I've been told plenty of times, you're too emotional. All right? When my Bible tells me that one of my brothers and my sisters in Christ are hurting, we should. It should bother you that much. What else does the Bible say? You are one body. Some's the hands, some's the feet, some's the head, some's the heart. Some's the legs, some's the knee. But you tell me you bump that toe, the rest of that body don't ache? You tell me you, you pinch one of those fingers, it don't ache, the rest of the body? And God says, 
that is how we should be as one being in that situation. To love your neighbor as yourself. He said, how can you say you hate your brother whom you have seen, love God whom you had not seen? You know what he says after that? You lie. You do not the truth. So I'm asking you today to be a soldier in Christ. But let me ask you one thing by closing. You ever seen God move in your life? You ever seen God do something He didn't have to do? Maybe you've never seen the Holy Spirit poke somebody and tell them to get, raise them up, break the chains, open the door. You ever seen God open a door for you? You ever seen God make a difference in your life, heal somebody that you knew? Just recently, I had a friend, and I've told him on Wednesday night, I'm going to tell you here on Sunday morning, I had a man, had a wife. She's had breast cancer in both. Doctor was tore up that said, just be prepared. So they were going to take the test to, to figure out what to do and how much more of an invasive. Man, come see me. I was at work up on the mountain that day, and I ain't been there. I, I'm there one or two, maybe three times a week, but it's not the same day every week, not the same time. There's no schedule for that. Just so happened, he said, I, what's going on? He said, I come up here to find you. I said, what's wrong now? He said, well, I got plenty wrong, but got nothing to do with work. I said, what is it? I got a lady that means the world to me. I said, what's wrong with Miss Kathy? He said, she's got cancer, breast cancer in both. He said, it is bad. All right. So I looked at him. I said, what you want to do? He said, there's only one thing we can do. I said, that's right. First and foremost, you got to remember, we do anything, whatever happens, good or bad to me or you, we're going to give him the glory and the praise. And he Absolutely, but I'm not ready. I said, listen, fella, it ain't over with. We just, he don't know everything, but we know the one that does. And this is what he said. That's why I'm here right now. I said, absolutely. Get out of this truck. Let's pray right here. We prayed right there. He came up a couple of other times before the opportunity for them to go to uh find out what everybody else thought that they knew was going on. We prayed every time. I mean, that man would leave with a burden. And man, he was breaking my heart. Man, he loves her, Tyler. I mean, been married for years, just like it was the first day they got married. She goes to the doctor. They run the test. He comes back up there the next time I see him. Been looking for you. said, okay something to tell you. I said, what is it? You seen Miss Kathy lately? I said, I ain't. I ain't up here like I used to be. Yeah, I know. We went to the doctor and I said, and? I said, the doctor said, uh, said they run the test three times. I said, they couldn't find nothing. Now, when they left, it was in both. Now, if you're a professional like they are, <laughs> I don't know how you missed that bad. Now, Brother Mike, I just happen to believe that it was there. I believe it. I don't believe they're that wrong. Do I believe they can be? Yeah. But I just don't believe they're that wrong. But when you decide to choose him above any and everything, and going to give him the glory and honor, and he can trust you, He'll send the angel to tap you. He says, stand up. Don't worry about it. It's all right. So today I'm asking you, soldiers in prayer. Seth said he talked about it this morning in Sunday school, about loving a child so much and having a candy drawer. And it's nothing for you to say, yeah, get you what you want. Get all you want. That's what grandparents do, is it not? I know we've got two sets. 
It's not, that's what they want. That's why it's there. They say all we want. The, court, the drawer's full. That's what God does. That's what he means. That's what he intends. He loves you that much that you take whatever you got and it won't affect him because he loves you that much. Soldiers in prayer, the least we can do as we stand to our feet. I'm done today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Had a song of invitation on my heart today. But that can't happen. That's all right. God knows. God knows. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I won't hold you today. God spoke to your heart already if he was going to. No reason the invitation should last longer than the message. If God's speaking, he'll move. Or you will. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I just ask you that one question. You ever seen God do something that you know it only was him? No way to get around it. Can't be explained by anybody else. God do something for you that big that you know that it was nothing but prayer. A pivotal prayer that make all the difference. How about it today? Every one of us should say yes. The first one was salvation. More to come later. Just a branch, as she said this morning. God has got a plan for you. Just what will you do with it today? A praying soldier can get more done than any mouthing church member, I promise you. Almighty God, we love you and we thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this word of God that we have a copy of it. Thank you that we were born in America. Thank you that you give us to our parents that we have. Thank you, Lord, that we are, have freedom. That we can share and we can explain and we can give. And others say, how in the world did that happen? It's just the Lord. I have no idea. God's blessed us beyond measure. Lord, I thank you for it. Jesus, I thank you for giving you life. And God, thank you for giving you son. Bless every home that's represented here today. Every thought, every mind, and everything that goes along with it. For each one that wanted to be here and could not. For every prayer request that's on each heart and one that's been mentioned. Pray God you bless them as well. Thank you, God, that you know what we need more than we know ourselves. Lord, for you are in control and not us. God, we need you. We love you. More than that, we thank you for all you've done and what you're going to do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Appreciate you being with us today. Thank you for coming.